All right, welcome to class. We are going to continue talking about population and we are going to start with population theory. You will need to plan on taking some notes and some flashcards. So please have some flashcards prepared. We'll probably be doing about five flashcards today. So I like this old um, political cartoon because it shows you a bit about how our population has been growing and you can clearly see that we have the years down here at the bottom of the chart and then we have numbers and billions for the population along the right and then it really is looking like are we going to be able to continue to sustain our world's population given kind of our natural resources that we have going on. Um, we've been covering the demographic transition model. Remember the DTM is five stages. There is stage one, two, three, four, and five. And this next, um, this next concept that we're going to learn about, it is critical that you understand the DTM in order to understand the next topic. So if you're still a little bit fuzzy about the DTM, I would probably suggest that you read the section in the textbook about the DTM, and I can provide the notes for that. Um, or excuse me, I can provide the page numbers for that for you if you would like to ask me what that is for our current textbook. I can tell you where to find that. Basically what we have is we have population growth, the red line, and then we have birth rates, which is the gray line, and then we have the black line, which represents death rates. This green shaded area is your natural increase rate. And you can clearly see that depending on what station or what stage you are in the DTM will depend on um, your birth rates remaining high, decreasing or dropping really low, death rates remaining high, decreasing or dropping really low, and as well as your population being able to increase over time and then perhaps decline with stage five. So the first flashcard that we're going to do together is the epidemiological transition. Okay, so this one's kind of like the E echo, E T M, epidemiological. So pause the video and try to say that a couple of times. Epidemiological. It's a tough one. This concept focuses on changes over time um, that impact our mortality rates. So there are different types of things that fit into the ETM. One of the things that is measured is, of course, health conditions in different regions and disease patterns. So it's going to either result in a decline in death rates and you're going to have an increased life expectancy, meaning people are living longer. The society is typically going to go through a transition from communica communicative diseases. Uh, communicative disease would be something like um the common cold or even something more severe depending on if you're like stage one or stage two it could be something like smallpox cholera uh, typhoid uh, measles okay those type of things would be more more likely to happen more likely to occur then to degenerative diseases. A degenerative disease is typically a disease that is created or developed because you are starting to live really long. So in locations where people don't age out and they're dying young, they're not going to um, get these degenerative diseases. Can you think of anything? If you were thinking of something like Alzheimer's, you would be correct, dementia, you'd be correct. Um, a lot of types of cancers can form um, typically with um, the older adults. So those would be things that happen, heart disease, those things develop because people are living so long. So they're not, you're not going to see a five-year-old with Alzheimer's. You're not going to see a 12-year-old with dementia. You're not typically going to find a 14-year-old with heart disease. Those are typically things that happen because of age. I'm going to go ahead and allow you guys to watch this separate link on your own. The audio won't play correctly if I try to record it using my screen. So I will go ahead and link this below in the video if you want to pause right now and go ahead and watch this three-minute video. 
Okay, next slide. Uh, here is what the ETM, or the Epidemiological Transition Model, looks like. You can see that it looks really similar to the Demographic Transition Model. Um, still has some information that looks the same. This one, it looks like it's separated into maybe three stages, if you will. It has both uh, high birth rate decreasing to a lower birth rate. This one right here is your total population. You can see that um, age of communicative diseases, you're going to have high fertility rates, meaning there's lots of babies because they don't have access to contraception. Um, with that, though, they also have high mortality rates. They are having lots of babies, but they also aren't having very many of them live for very long. Life expectancy for this one is only about 30 years of age. Okay, and that's going to be um, similar stage one, stage two type, type states. Uh, the second one is the age of receding pandemics. So these ones are going to have high fertility still, but it's decreasing. And then their mortality rate is also going to be dropping. Um, they are living a little bit longer. They're starting to get some vaccinations, but they're still going to have probably a couple generations worth of people that need to get those vaccinations. So you're still going to have a relatively high mortality rate, but it is starting to slow. These ones are going to be your stage two as well, um, some early stage three DTM. The age of degenerative and man-made diseases, interesting here, man-made diseases. This is again going to be um, high population. People are starting to live extremely long here, and because they're living so long, they are developing those um, diseases that occur to people that are part of the elderly population. You can see here that the life expectancy is about 70 years of age. They have relatively low fertility rates, similar to what you would see in a stage four state where they're, they're still just barely breaching that 2.1% um, population increase number that they need to hit. So they're not, they're not a stage five necessarily, but they're just barely at about a two or about a 2.1%. Again, they're going to have a low rate of mortality um, because um, people have been vaccinated for a really long time. They have great infrastructure, and you can see that um, the ETM and the DTM do kind of have this overlapping um, similarities with what states fall into which examples. Okay, Malthus. Malthus is... Um, one of the flashcards that you have to do, you have to do Malthusian theory, okay? And this was named after Thomas Malthus. So he published his views in the late 18th century, talking about how he believed that population would grow at a geometric rate, meaning you would go from, it would basically double. So it's going to go from 1 to 2 to 4, 16, 32, it doubles. And he believes that food, though, is going to be increasing at an arithmetic rate. Food only produces one, two, three, four in sequence. So he basically says that if population is growing like this, doubling every time, resources are not, they're just basically working in sequence, eventually we're going to come to this point of crisis that he refers to it as. He refers to this point of crisis meaning that um, eventually we will not be able to sustain population on Earth. And um, this does probably sound a little bit like someone, if you are a Marvel fan, you might be familiar with who might have been somewhat inspirational to the Marvel franchise for coming up with um, this person's character. Go ahead and pause and see if you can tell me who it is. Okay, if you thought that the answer was Thanos, you're absolutely right. I don't believe that it's any um, coincidence that their names sound even similar, but um, Malthus was somebody who very much believed that there needed to be checks in order to um, correct our population. So these preventative checks that he refers to them as, um, he says they're the postponement of marriage because clearly if people aren't getting married, they're no longer going to have babies fast. That's going to decrease your fertility rates. He also said um, that um, you're going to have an increased cost of food as well. 
So in addition to having preventative checks, like um, slowing down the rate at which people would get married, he calls what are, he has what are called positive checks. And positive checks are not happy things, okay? He is super into having things like famine, meaning that we would have really, really bad climate conditions to where we're incapable of growing food. He's all for that. He thinks that war is a great positive check because obviously if you have war, people are going to die. So therefore you're going to decrease um, the need for food because you have fewer people living. He loves disease because again, it's going to eliminate population. He wants to make sure that we can not get to this critical point of crisis um, because all of those positive checks would increase the death rate. So Thomas Malthus is certainly not a proponent of high population. He wants population to remain low. Uh, here you can kind of see uh, another chart and it's just a different way that you might be able to visualize what I've been telling you is that we essentially have population on the rise and you're going across with time on the X and Y axis. Then you have what is considered our carrying capacity, which is this dotted line. And he believes that if we've breached our carrying capacity um, right here, population is exceeding the carrying capacity, a population check or positive or preventative would need to occur. So if population is getting too high, it would be a good thing if we had famine. It would be a good thing if we um, maybe created tax credits for people to slow down the rate at which they're having children or to have things like war. He believes that um, the crisis basically means that our agricultural spaces are limited. We've already seen data that we've been talking about in class where arable land, which is the land that can be used for farming, has been decreasing over time. We also are allowed to live longer because we have technical process or progresses like um, machinery, irrigation, fertilizers. We'll talk quite a bit about um, these specifically when we start talking about the industrial revolution. But if your mind is kind of thinking in that direction of things that have helped people live longer, you would absolutely be correct. Um, also, because we have these great technological advances, people are living longer, which of course is frustrating Thomas Malthus. He believes that eventually we will surpass the available resources. And you guys, he's really not wrong. We looked at that population clock in class. You could clearly see that we're growing at a really fast rate. We're fastly approaching that kind of um, 2050 kind of do or die moment for our population. And he predicted this all the way back in the 18th century. I mean, he really, really knew um, knew really well what was going to be happening here. So this chart right here does just kind of show you um, what's been going on with the Earth's population and relating it to wheat and rice production. You can see that we are at a steady increase and that our food production has also remained a, a pretty much steady increase over time. Yes, I know there was a little bit of a dip here, but um, it is generally on the rise. So again, showing that we haven't reached our carrying capacity. Okay, and finally, we have Esther Boserup. She believed in the opposite of Malthus. She was not against population increase. In fact, she was for population increase. Um, she be believed that um, we should be focusing on the positive aspects of a larger population, suggested, suggesting that basically the more people there are available, the more people there would be to provide work. So we could put people out in the fields, we could put people at, um, at work. She didn't quite know what technology was going to do, neither did Malthus, but um, I think too she deserves credit in knowing that eventually things would improve technologically and we would be able to increase our crop strains or get higher yields for all of our food. And she argued that as population increased, more pressure is placed on the existing agricultural system, which is going to force that invention to be required in order for us to continue to um, carry this population capacity.